Welcome back to the collection update series, and today we're balancing out the binder. <laughs> what is going on, guys? And yes, we are back with another edition of the binder update series. We have got 12 amazing new cards that we're going to be looking at, and yes, balance is one of them. Going to go ahead and spoil that right off the bat. For those of you who may not know what this series is, essentially we are working our way to finishing a 480 card 12 pocket Ultra Pro binder. It's a lot of cards, we're about halfway through, I think we're working our way close to that point. So I'm really excited to see where we end up after we get all of the binder filled. We'll do a full update, we'll actually get to look through the whole binder. Uh, it should be a lot of fun and hopefully you guys are enjoying collecting along with me. Now as part of collecting along with me, I want to encourage you guys to share your pickups. If you have picked up a new card for a commander deck or maybe you just saw a card or opened a card that you really enjoy, please make sure to share it down below. If you picked it up at an LGS, make sure to tag them or show them, hey, we really appreciate what you guys are doing for the community. Now as such, we really do like to highlight uh, one of you guys in the comments every single week and we actually have casual trading cards uh, as the one who we are actually sharing today day who actually picked up a handful of cards at Tucson Games and Gadgets uh, and one of them is actually one of my favorite cards. I actually commented back to him letting him know that it's one of my favorites because oh it's beautiful. Borderless Sensei's Divining Top, an abs absolutely stunning card. I really, really love it. Uh, and again, there's some other cards in there. I'll let you guys check that out. Uh, but man, what an awesome pickup. And again, casual trading cards, thank you so much for uh, sharing your pickups on last week's video. With that out of the way though, guys, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the 12 cards we have picked up for the binder this week. All right, guys, and here we are with our very first card. Yes, it is a balance, but not just any balance. This is the Judge Foil DCI promo of balance featuring the amazing Kev Walker artwork. I really do love this card, uh, specifically this version. This isn't one that you get to see every day. I do have a couple of revised versions already in the collection, which again, I love. I love the classic artwork. I think that's something, there's something really strong to be said for that, but I love the fact that we were able to add another Judge Foil promo to our collection. We've actually got a handful of these that we've added to the binder. Uh, again, gonna be really exciting to look back on that throughout uh, this series at the very end when we actually get to look through everything at once. Uh, but again, just a beautiful, beautiful piece. This is one that I wanted to have for the cube just to kind of bling it out a little bit. Uh, and again, Balance, just a, an absolute powerhouse card. If you've never played with Balance, it's insane. Really, really love that. Next up, we have Manatithe. This is the player rewards version, which is obviously kind of a textless version. You don't normally see too many of these floating around anymore. Uh, I actually just did the Dominaria, um, the the uh, Patreon uh, rewards for, for this month are player reward framed, uh, which is a little bit different than anything we've done before, but I'm really excited by that. Uh, and this is just a really beautiful card, that that beautiful framing, the, the very uh, symmetrical sort of uh, composition with this is just a really stunning card. Manatithe, a very unique card because it's a counter spell in white. It's a white four spike, so it counters target spell unless the opponent pays one. Obviously a soft counter, but still a really unique piece. Uh, and again, that player reward promo art is just awesome. Moving on, yes, we are skipping over everything and going straight to green. We have another promo, which is Arrogant Worm, uh, which truthfully I just picked up because I like promos. That's really the only reason I took this one. Uh, I do love the Madness ability, so if you guys don't know, basically if you would discard this card, instead you can actually pay the Madness cost, which then allows you to play this card as you're discarding it. Uh, a really unique mechanic and one that we have seen in past in the past, but obviously it's kind of been a while, and so I really like this. Uh, this ability. Again, love the promo, of course. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good promo. We'll see that uh, as we go through the next couple weeks, but uh, really do love the artwork. And again, that foiling is quite nice. You do see the uh, little FNM stamp here as well, which I love. Next one, speaking of foils, is Ayula Queen Among Bears. This is the retro frame foil, uh, which is an absolutely stunning piece. I'm not a big commander player, as most of you guys probably know, uh, but Ayula does seem the way to go if you're gonna make a bear commander. So uh, I really wanted to pick her up just because it's a beautiful card. This is one of the first cards, funny, funny enough, that I did a proxy for years ago when we first started Patreon. Uh, and honestly, it's the artwork that really stands out to me, 
but on top of that retro frame. That's not something that we, until recently, were able to get. And so for me, this is a really special piece. I just think it's stunning. Love the shooting star here as well. A nice little arc back to the old school foils that, again, we don't get to see that often anymore. So very happy to pick this up. And uh, if I do ever make a bear commander, this is the one, obviously. I think it might be the only option. Uh, basically, a, a really nice little pickup here for elves. So for those of you who don't know, um, Caitlin and I do play Magic every once in a while. Uh, she doesn't like to advertise that, but uh, we do really like playing elves, both of us. Uh, she's very, very good with the deck. It's an absolute blast to play her against that uh, because she is pretty well versed in how to get through the deck, how to do the right, you know, play the right play patterns, all that stuff. Elvish Champion is one of those cards that works extraordinarily well in the deck, specifically because of the printing of Yavamaya, which turns all lands into forests, which means all of your elves are unblockable and get plus one plus one if you have the Elvish Champion and Yavamaya out. So uh, truthfully, just a ridiculously powerful card. Three mana Lord for your elves and giving basically unblockable is insane. Uh, and again, this is my favorite artwork for this one. Uh, there's actually a handful of different Elvish Champions actually looked when I was uh, picking this card up. There are so many Elvis champions, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I really do like this version. This is, I think, definitely my favorite. Again, love the old school frame. Uh, and so this was a, a great addition in my opinion. <clears throat> I believe our last green card here, and it's Night Pack Ambusher. Again, another promo here. This is an absolutely stunning piece of artwork, in my opinion. Uh, I really loved this card in Standard. So for those of you who don't know, there was a Simic Flash deck uh, that Night, put, Night Pack Ambusher really, really helped make powerful because you could flash this out uh, and then not have to play during your turns and essentially just continuously gain wolves every turn that get more powerful the more of these you get out. So uh, basically, it just was a ridiculously powerful creature for that time. Uh, I really enjoyed the play patterns of that deck. As you guys know, I like to play on the opponent's turn because I'm a bad person. Uh, and so Nightpack Ambusher really, really fit well into the deck as a nice kind of top end finisher uh, that could really just grind down the opponent in terms of damage. And so uh, for that reason, I was happy to pick this up, but not only that, of course, it is a promo. Uh, and again, that artwork is so unique. I love the composition of the actual wolf on the rock, just making it look so, so impactful. And it is, it's an impact when it hits the board. It's phenomenal. So again, this is my favorite version of this card. Absolutely stunning. Had to pick this one up. All right, look. <laughs> uh, I picked up a dingus egg. Um, <laughs> This, truthfully, I uh, I picked up because it's funny. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this one. Just gonna go ahead and point that out. Uh, this actually is an interesting card. It's an artifact for four. Whenever anyone loses a land, Dingus Egg deals two damage to that player for each land lost. There are some play patterns with things like Armageddon that can get really funny, uh, that most of the time will end in either a draw or just an insta win. Um, that being said, I 100% picked this up for the name. <laughs> um, I knew this card existed for the longest time and I actually have never owned one, uh, but I, I, it came up in the random thing and I was like, you know what? For the sake of the joke, we gotta get the dingus egg in there. Uh, and we did. So there we go. There's literally no other reason to pick this up. I don't think I'm ever gonna play it. It's just a funny name. Moving on to hybrid and multicolor. Uh, we're actually just picking up a standard Manamorphos. This is the Shadowmore edition, which I believe is the original edition uh, of this card. The reason I picked this up is actually because I never had a full playset of the same version of Manamorphos. And in fact, I only ever had two of the Shadowmore versions. Uh, and so I thought it'd be nice to actually fill out that, that playset because again, this is such a useful card. One of my favorite strategies, uh, and I believe I've mentioned this before, is Storm. Uh, I absolutely love the, the combo potential with that deck, the over-the-top potential of that deck. Uh, and so with that in mind, I thought, you know what? I would love to pick up my full playset of the original Shadowmore Manamorphos for the modern version of the list. And so uh, I had to pick this up. I do really love the artwork on this. It's just a really interesting, kind of odd piece of artwork. Uh, but most importantly to me was the fact that it was the original printing. I do love picking up originals. I think that's something really special. Between that and promos, there's a lot of things I love to pick up, obviously. But uh, Manamorphos, a really powerful card, kind of a freebie card that 
draws you into your deck and then allows you to kind of keep going, uh, which is a really awesome thing. Uh, very, very good for Storm for obvious reasons. All right, next up, speaking of original cards, we have Mirari's Wake. Uh, this is a hugely powerful enchantment from, um, uh, I believe, is it Mirage or Judgment? One of the two. Enchantment, uh, it's Judgment. I don't know why I was thinking. Uh, three, a green and a white. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. But here is the kicker. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that that land could produce, uh, or that that land produced. So basically you get to double up on your, your mana. Uh, this is a crazy card, not only for the lore aspect, uh, there's a lot of lore surrounding the Mirari uh, thing. I, it turned into Memnarch, it was like this whole thing. Anyway, definitely check that out. Uh, but this is also just a hugely powerful card, again, for Cube. Uh, it allows you to get a lot of combo potential because you have so much mana uh, that you can dig through your deck, do a lot of really powerful things, and yes, it does take a while, but the payoff is huge. Uh, it works great in tandem with cards like Heartbeat of Spring. Uh, any kind of like mana doubling effect, you can really take off with this, and I absolutely love it. Uh, and so picking up an original version of this card was really just one of those things that's kind of a bucket list for me. Not necessarily like a crazy high value card, but it is, you know, holding some value, and it's just a really powerful one uh, and again for cube absolutely love it all right another promo uh Rakdos fire wheeler uh kind of cool to see a newer card in here too and truthfully the artwork on this is ridiculous to me i think this might be my favorite piece of artwork from this uh this page despite having that that judge foil balance too uh but this is just stunning the the circular light pattern with the flames uh off of the fire wheeler are insane obviously an arc to the name fire wheel makes a circle uh but truthfully that's the only reason i picked this up uh i don't think it's that good of a card it didn't see a ton of play by any means and i don't intend to play it anywhere uh but for the promo collection i knew I wanted to pick this up and so I'm very happy to say that we did it's nice to feature a newer card as well uh, a lot of times you know especially with collecting I personally get hung up on finding the older cards the cards that you know are a little bit more challenging to find this one is not hard to find it's very easy but it's a really beautiful piece in my opinion and so I was really happy to add it all right, and moving on to one of my all-time favorite Planeswalkers, uh, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas. Um, this is my favorite version of Tezzeret. Uh, Tezzeret as a character, I really do love uh, because he kind of has that, uh, not freelance, position and by any means he obviously teamed up with Nicol Bolas but uh, he's got such a dark story that I, I really do enjoy the lore behind Tezzeret uh, but on top of that the blue black is one of my favorite color pairings and this obviously deals heavily with artifacts which is a strategy that I love so truthfully this just incorporates a lot of the things that I like about the game into a single card and the artwork is amazing. Uh, I absolutely love the artwork here. It's one of my favorites of uh, any of the Planeswalkers, to be honest. It's up there for me with things like Jace the Mind Sculptor, which again, I think has a beautiful piece of artwork, uh, but this is just a bad A kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I really love it for that reason. Uh, just a stunning card, a very powerful card too. Uh, despite it not necessarily seeing a ton of play, I do think it's actually just a really good one. Uh, and for that reason, again, happy to pick it up. And finally, guys, our last card. It is a white-bordered City of Brass, uh, one of the few rainbow lands in the game, uh, but it's a very, very powerful one. Obviously, it can tap for any color, but then it does deal one damage to you. There are certainly ways around that. There's also, you know, generally you build a deck that doesn't really care. Uh, some people might be wondering why I got the white-bordered version. Um, actually, I'm in a minority here. I like the white border versions of cards. I don't know why, I just generally kind of like them. Uh, and so for me, this was actually a pretty easy choice. I think the artwork here is really stunning as well. Uh, that beautiful little light ray coming off the, the top left corner of the card is stunning. So uh, for me, this is a pretty easy choice. Uh, I really like this one. It's a powerful land. Again, a very good cube addition because it does allow for multiple strategies if you're trying to get multicolor strategies in your cube. Uh, certainly a great pickup there. It's also just a really good land for a multitude of different strategies. And so uh, kind of a no brainer. It just kind of fits into a lot of different places. And so again, I'm actually really happy to pick this up. I haven't, I don't believe, I maybe have one or two City of Brasses that are not this version. 
Uh, and so this was actually kind of a nice one to, to pick up because it's a new card for me. I've never owned it before, so very happy with that. But all that being said, guys, let's wrap it up. All right, guys, so that is the 12 new cards we are adding to the binder this week. As always, we'll have the completion aspect as well as the binder value up on the screen for you guys so you can track that along. I don't actually believe we're quite at halfway yet, but we are getting quite close. I'm really excited for that. We might do like a halfway point check-in just to see where we're at at that point, uh, but I'm really enjoying this, this series. I think this has been an absolute blast. It's also nice to get back into the swing of things. I know we had a few weeks where we really didn't update the binder, uh, so this is really a special thing for us to do. I do enjoy sharing the collection aspect of Magic with you guys, and so if you guys do have any brand new pickups, just some cool stuff that you've got in your collection, please share it with us. I would absolutely love to see what you guys are collecting, why you're collecting it, and hopefully sharing that together. So all that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. Happy collecting.